All right, so you should be on page 610. We're going to be doing notes for Chapter 8, Lesson 3, and we do need to actually write in the book when appropriate. So please have your books out and open to page 610. All right, so we have been working with equations this week and uh, focusing on how to model equations, how to write an equation based on a word problem and picking the variable to represent the unknown quantity and so forth. Now, we're going to be practicing a more efficient way of solving addition and subtraction equations today. And we're going to add two more properties to the list of properties we should already be learning and memorizing. And the first property we're going to talk about is the subtraction property of equality. Okay, so here are the words. If you subtract the same number from each side of the equation, the two sides remain equal. And that is important in an equation. It has to remain balanced. So if you do something to one side, you have to also do it to the other side. And that's something we've actually been practicing really all year long. That, that, uh, that whole idea of keeping things balanced, doing the same thing to each side. All right, so for an example, if you have 5, it is equal to number 5. But if you were to subtract 3 from both sides, you would then have 2 on each side, and it's still equal. 5 equals 5, 2 equals 2. And for what it's worth, negative 3 is equal to negative 3 as well. All right, so here's the algebra part. We're going to add a variable. So x plus 2 is equal to 3. So if we wanted to get rid of that plus 2, we are going to minus 2. So we're going to put a negative 2 on that side. And so we know because of the inverse property that plus 2 and minus 2 are going to be equal to 0. That makes a 0 pair. So we have to also do minus 2 on the other side. So if we say 3 minus 2, we get 1. So all we have left on the left side is uh, the x, and the right side is going to be 1, so x equals 1. And that's how that works. So you can use inverse operations to solve equations. Inverse operations undo each other. For example, to solve an addition equation, use the subtraction property of equality. And when you solve the equation by subtracting the same number from each side, uh, that is the subtraction property of equality, as I just said just a moment ago. OK, so we're going to look at an example. All right, so this example is done for us. So I'm going to talk us through this. Um, Ruben and Tariq have 245.5 and 5 tenths downloaded minutes of music. If Ruben has 132 minutes, how many must belong to Tariq? Write and solve an addition equation to determine how many minutes belong to Tariq. So what we don't know is what Tariq has. So uh, the variable t is probably a good letter to use to represent that unknown quantity, and that is what they chose. So if you'll see Tariq's minutes here, it's going to be represented by the variable t. Okay, so we know that together they have 245 minutes, so that's why the long bar is been has been labeled 245 and 5 tenths minutes, and we know that the two pieces together... Uh, are going to equal that. One is the unknown Tariq's minute, and the other is uh, Ruben, which we know has 132 minutes. So if we write the equation, it's going to be 132 plus t equals 245 and 5 tenths. So once we write that equation out, we want to get this t by itself. So if we have a positive 132, of course we're going to put a minus 132 underneath it, and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So 245 and 5 tenths minus 132. Now, this is where we line up the decimal point. So this decimal point right here uh, is not visible, but there's going to be like a point zero here. So 5 minus 0 is 5. Got the decimal point, And you just do the standard subtraction. And we find out that Tariq had 113 minutes and 5 tenths. OK? Always, always, always simplify. Okay, all right. So um, you can check it by adding the 132 plus the 113 and 5 tenths, and you'll find that that is the correct answer. Okay, so now we are going to, uh, to do an example to see if we understand the uh, subtraction uh, property of equality. So let's suppose that Ruben had 147 
and 5 tenths minutes of the uh, 245 and 5 tenths. So we've changed the numbers a little bit, but the picture is going to be exactly the same. We're going to write and solve an addition equation to determine how many minutes that uh, Tariq had. Okay, so before we begin, before you get started, let's just draw the equation again. So we have the model, and of course we have to turn the pin on, so that is helpful. All right, so we have the total amount is still going to be 245 and 5 tenths. And then we have the piece that we know when this time it's going to be 147 and 5 tenths. And then we have Tariq that we don't know. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and write your equation and go ahead and solve it. And then tell me what is that answer going to be? Okay, before we do that though, here's the equation. And I wrote this backwards just to show you, it really doesn't matter what side the variable's on. If we have 245 and 5 tenths minutes equals 147 and 5 tenths minutes, plus t. Our goal <clears throat> is to get the t isolated. So how do we get rid of this positive 147 and 5 tenths minutes? Are we going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide? Go ahead and answer that for me, please. Well, of course, the answer is subtract because we started out with an addition equation and we going, we're going to do the inverse in order to isolate the t. So 147 and 5 tenths <clears throat> is positive, so we subtract a 147 uh, and 5 tenths. So once we do that, this becomes a zero pair, and it goes away. And then we just have the t left. So all we have to do now is find the difference of 245 and 5 tenths minus 200, 147 and 5 tenths. Go ahead and solve that for me, please. Okay, we're going to end up with 98 and 0 tenths is what t is equal to. But is that the best way to actually write that? No. If we wanted to simplify this, we're just going to get rid of this little bit here, and the answer is going to be 98. Okay, 98 minutes. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing but backwards. So there, there's such a thing as the addition property of equality. Now, if you add the same number to both sides of the equation, the two sides remain equal. So if you have 5, it is equal to 5. But if you add 3 to one side and you add 3 to the other side, positive 3, positive 3, and positive 3 are equal, and then you're going to end up with 8 equal, equal to 8. So uh, all that stays balanced. So if you have a subtraction equation like x minus 2 equals 3, to get rid of this minus 3, to get rid of this negative 2, we're going to add 2. So if we do this, it, became, it creates the inverse, um, it creates a zero pair, and so the x will be by itself, and then we have 3 plus 2 is 5, and so the answer is 5. When you solve an equation by adding the same number to each side of the equation, you're using the addition property of, of equality. Okay, so, alright, here's an example they've done for us. We're just going to walk through and look to see what they've done. So at the age 25, German uh, Titov of Russia was the youngest person to travel into space. Uh, this is 52 years less than the oldest person to travel into space, John Glenn. How old was John Glenn? So write and solve the subtraction equation. Okay, so the oldest man's age, subtract the youngest age is 52 years. So we don't know how um, old John Glenn was, but we do know the youngest person was 25. We know that there was a difference of 52 years between them. So the age of John Glenn is unknown, and that's going to be the long part of the bar diagram. We know that 25 plus 52 is equal to that together, so the subtraction problem will be A, John Glenn, minus 25 equals 52. Okay, so if we have a minus 25 is equal to 52, to get rid of this, negative 25, we're going to add 25. And if we do that to this side, we have to do that to this side, and we end up with a isolated over here because this creates a zero pair. And then 52 plus 25 is 77. So John Glenn was 77 years old 
the last time that he went into space. And we can check that by 77 minus 25, and we do get 52. Okay? All right, so let's do one on our own. Georgia, Georgia's height is 4 inches less than Sienna's height. Georgia is 58 inches tall. Write and solve a subtraction equation to find Sienna's height. So the first thing we need to do is draw a picture. Uh, so I want you to go ahead and try to draw a picture and see if it matches mine. Okay, so what we don't know is Sienna's height. Okay, so she is the tallest person because it tells us that George's height is four inches less than Sienna. So I'm using the letter S for uh, that distance. We know that Georgia is 58 inches tall and that uh, four more inches would be equivalent to Sienna's height. All right, so let's go ahead and I want you to write an equation that is a subtraction problem that matches this picture. Go ahead and do that for me. Okay, so S minus 4, if we have S and we take away 4, it's going to equal 58. So now we have to try to isolate the S, and this, uh, this time I put the S on the left side. It doesn't matter because both of these expressions are equivalent to each other. So how do we get S by itself? So down here, I want to have S by itself. So if we have minus 4 here, what do we have to do? Go ahead and answer that for me. Okay, we're actually going to create a zero pair. If we have negative 4 here, we're going to put positive 4 underneath it. We're going to add 4 to this side, and so that creates a zero pair, and that becomes nothing. So S is left by itself. And so if we did plus 4 on this side, we have to do plus 4 on this side. Go ahead and solve that for me. What is 58 plus 4? Okay, that is going to be 62. So Sienna is 62 inches tall. Okay, I'm going to ask that question that I most of the time ask you at the end. What is something important to remember about this lesson? It might be two things in this lesson, um, or you could combine it into one thing. But I want you, if you don't really know off the top of your head, to go back and look over the last two pages and... Um, don't say, I don't know, because if you say, I don't know, I'm going to give you a 50% and make you redo the whole video again. So please uh, think about what what is really important about this lesson and answer that for me right now, please. Thank you.